Good morning, Year 6. I hope you're well and have had good weekends. Today, within our English session, we're going to be working towards understand how we can better describe a character's actions and using the verbs that we know and also extending our knowledge of certain verbs within that. As well as that, we're going to think about how we can develop our own plan so that we're clear on what we want to show within our writing when we write our own version of a Just So story in the next couple of weeks, uh, next few days, should I say. To be successful today, we need to clarify what a verb is or understanding it indicates what the subject of a sentence is doing. We need to confirm the meaning of some verbs, so we need to ensure that we understand some of the verbs that I've selected for you to use within um, a piece of writing. We need to practice, so, so use some of these verbs in some sentences ourselves. So it's got some sentence level work to do. Um, we need to try and make these sentences that little bit higher level by enhancing them with uh, adding some relative clauses to underpin uh, the description of what's been going on within those sentences. And then we need to think about other aspects of language which we'd like to include in our own just so type stories. So. By the end of today, you're going to be at that point where Rudyard Kipling was in the late 19th century, ready to write your just so stories for your best beloved um, or whoever it might be who's your audience for your writing. OK, guys, just a couple of little bits of recall then, just to our brains work. I'd like to see where I've made some mistakes. Now, Hanya, I know it's going to shock you, but occasionally, occasionally I'll make mistakes. In these sentences, there's at least one in each one. OK, so Camel lost his hump. Where's the error? Whale, the whale stole the mariner's suspenders. Where's the error? The gin was happy about the camel's behavior. Where's the error? And finally, the rhino's arm was affected the wet day. So just circle on your sheet the error for each one of these, please. Circle on your sheet the error for each one of these, please. Pause your video if you need any time to do that. Hopefully now you've spotted that. The camel didn't lose his hump, I should say. Uh, he didn't lose his hump. He gained his hump. Okay. The whale didn't steal the suspenders. Uh, the, uh, the suspenders were used by the mariner to affect the whale. Okay. The gin was unhappy. Okay. So there should have been a prefix uh, to make the antonym of happy there, of unhappy. Okay. And it wasn't the rhino's arm. It was the skin. And actually, it wasn't a wet day. It was a... Friday. Okay, so there's more than one error in that sentence there. Okay, guys, so we can see, hopefully, we can recall those three just so stories that we read last week. What I'd like you to have a look at now, unfortunately, I'm kind of in the way. I'll try and get out of the way. Uh, let's, yeah, I'll go over here. Okay, so what you've got to try and do is match these images to the verbs. I'm going to give you a list of actually, I can probably come up over here. So, we've got some verbs that are shown here, and then we've got some different verbs which are listed and I'd like you to think on your sheet again um, I'd like you to try and link the image to the verb so we've got swoop leap strut shrug saw bolt swagger skip and propel and all of those are movement verbs they betray how characters or beings might move okay so if I look around at my pictures I can see that I've got eight pictures for my eight verbs or should I say nine verbs? Sorry, should I, nine pictures. So if I look, I can see that this picture is skip. I can see that person moving in this. Okay, so their foreleg, their front leg is raised. Their toes are touching the floor, which indicates it's quite a light step that they're making. They're bouncing away. And I can also see on their face the, the feeling that they might be betraying where they're quite happy. What I'd like you to do then is have a look on your sheet, match your verbs to your images. Pause the video whilst you do that, please. Keeping going with that, guys. Using a ruler, all of us. Lovely job. Thank you very much. Okie dokie. Let's check how we've done. So skipping away. These are the fact you've all done this. Lovely people. That's me skipping. Hopefully, with, you know, um, a nose. Seem to have lost a nose. Second one. We've got this very, very fast moving character. So they're bolting around. This third character is very swaggering around the place and a word that's similar in meaning to swagger is struck so again it's about how we hold it up. it shows a confidence it shows somebody owning a room as they walk in a little bit um shrugging that tends to be something we indicate with our shoulders two or three reasons a character might shrug 
they don't care or they're denying something or they don't know. So it might be I don't care, I don't know, or I didn't do it. I don't know. Okay, so there's lots of reasons, but shrug in there. Um, soaring then tends to be a, a word that's synonymous with flying, but really soaring shows something that's a bit more majestic. We're soaring, we're quite a powerful, whether it's a plane or whether it's an animal that can fly, we're soaring above or away from people. Okay, then we've got the idea of um, leaping, so normally quite a powerful movement, and an animal which can leap is one that can normally move relatively quickly as well. So if we think about certain animals that are powerful, we wouldn't think that they can leap. So things like elephants, because they're so heavy, and therefore they're quite cumbersome when they move. Okay, if we're coming down from a, an animal that's up high that's soaring, we might be swooping down, swooping down, so really coming very quickly to where we're going. And then finally, we've got propelling, which normally we sometimes talk about if we've got a catapult, we might propel something. But also, if we're propelled forward, we might be we might be like whatever was in the catapult, which is thrust forward, moved forward. So we've got those different verbs to indicate the movement which either objects or characters can experience. If there's movement verbs then, we're going to try and use them in some sentences now. Now, if I think about this, I've got one verb that I could think about, um, uh, about the camel. So I'm thinking about which verb could I indicate for the camel. So the camel did something, that's the verb. It, the, the camel is the subject. The camel did something after he irritated the other animals. Because I know from our Just So story that the camel wasn't very happy. Uh, oh, sorry, wasn't very uh, pleasant and wasn't very considerate in his manner and how he was to the other animals. So after I've thought about the camel, I thought that he shrugged. Yeah, so sometimes you're like... <laughs> None of you guys in year six would ever do that. All of you, as soon as you see your teacher, you stand to attention, you smile, and whenever they say a joke, you laugh. However, if you're a rude child in a different school, you might shrug when you thought you'd irritated someone, especially a teacher. Hang on a second. I'm looking at this. The camel shrug. Now I'm thinking it doesn't look quite right. I've used a lovely verb because I know the camel might shrug if the camel was of a human dissuasion and was able to shrug. The camel shrug. Doesn't look right. I'm thinking, what do I need to add on? And now I need, ah, I need to add that ed suffix. But because of the nature of the root word of shrug, I also need to double up on the consonant. So I've got the doubled G and then the ed. So now I know that he's shrugged. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good now. I might even, I might even uh, strut around because I've done a nice sentence. I've used a nice verb. The camel shrugged. Oh. I don't think I've done as well as I could. I think I could go even better. Now I'm thinking, what, what work I've been doing where, where I could embellish, where I could improve the sentence even further. I'm thinking maybe what I could do is I could get some more information about that camel. So I could add a proper noun. Uh, sorry, a relative, a, a relative pronoun. This relative pronoun of who. So the camel who, so because he's a character in a story, I'm saying who rather than which or that. But the camel who, what did he do? The camel who worked very hard or um, smiled beautifully or hated using energy. A bit of a mistake there. Has anybody spotted it? Well done, Fatima. Yes, there's a double comma after energy. There should only be one. So just around here, there should only be one comma. Accidents happen. The camel who hated using energy shrugged after he irritated the other an animals. Still doesn't care. But we now learn a little bit more about how he, why he might be irritating. We learn, if, if we just read that one sentence now, the camel who hated using energy shrugged after he irritated the other animals. I can see through that, um, that relative clause, which has been embedded within the sentence, I can see that he doesn't like expending energy doesn't like trying hard and i now know that that might be linked that probably is linked to the fact that he's irritated these other animals what i'd like you to do is a similar task now you've got these verbs so we've used shrug and we've talked a lot about swag uh and i'd like you to think about some other animal and i'd like you to think about how you could add a verb how you could add a verb with the proper suffix and then how you could have a verb with the proper suffix and then before that verb, you embed a relative clause. So the parrot, who, what's the parrot doing? Did the parrot leap onto the feeder? Did he swoop? Did he strut onto the feeder? Did he shrug onto the feeder? Could you shrug onto the feeder? I don't think that's the quite right verb. Have a think about which verb you could put in here and then try and write a sentence from that. Once you've done that, you do me three more sentences. 
pick your own animal and maybe link it to the plan that you started coming up with for your own just so story so me if i were redoing this i'd now think i'm gonna write about a dog so i'm not just gonna write about parrots leaping and soaring i might talk about a dog swag the dog swaggered into the room why is he swaggering the dog who just found a steak swaggered so i'm now thinking about what type of sentence i could write so what i'd like you to do then complete our parrot sentences and then write three more sentences of your own i'd really like them to include both the verb and the relative clause please and that's your first bit of writing that i'd like you to do second thing we're going to do we're going to move now on to planning our story so once you've done this we're going to move on so pause your video if you haven't done this but do this first once you've done this, we're going to move on to planning our story. So last week we looked at some stories and in that third column where it says how, you summarise something. You summarise one of our other just so stories. And then what you thought about is what your story was going to be. Now, you, the idea was you, you, you use the generic plot from that first column to think about what your story would be. And my story was going to be how the dog got its scent of smell. And my story was going to have this idea of a dog produced horrible smell. So that's the beginning. And without using too much of your year four knowledge of the digestive system, I think you can think, can't you guys, about the kind of horrible smells who's producing evil. Yeah, you can think. Okay, now the cat and the pigeon, these other animals, moaned to each other as they couldn't eat, but dog didn't think he was smelly. So dog doesn't understand the problem. Dog's there thinking, I'm not smelly, and dog does smell. So cat and pigeon complain to the swan, that's the other animal, where they get somebody to try and solve it. This is the generic plot. Then the swap, swan, the resolution was the swan flapped his wings next to dog until the hound, I'm using a synonym there for dog, becomes so irritated, became irritated, so he became irritated, and then noticed the smell wafting around him and realised it was him to blame all along. Now, by the end, the swan, like our gin in our other um, Just So Stood, the swan had the magical power to give the dog the sense of smell, which allowed self-awareness from the dog and washing. So because of the self-awareness, the dog then decided to wash and hopefully become less smelly. That's what, what my story is going to eventually become. And now I need to think about what I need to do to make it a good quality piece of writing. So at the moment, it's quite a fun story. And I know my son would like it because it's about smelly things. But I've now got to think about what will make it a good piece of writing. I'm thinking, what do I know I need to include? And I know I want to include relative clauses. I'm going to show that by including a relative clause. The dog who had been playing in the rain, that's it. Smelt like a putrid piece of meat and I put a lot in it. Just put a sprinkling of a lovely simile in there as well. I know I want to include dialogue because we've utilised dialogue in our writing recently. So I'm thinking, oh, oh my, exclaimed the cute kitten as the measly mutt walked into the room. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Muttered the dog, stamping his paws angrily. So I'm, I'm liking that dialogue. I'm thinking, I've got my inverted commas, great. I've got my I've got my new speaker new line, great. Have I got oh yeah, I've got my terminal punctuation or my inverted commas there or my other form of punctuation. So I've got question mark, full stop, or capital or, or exclamation point, or I might have a comma and then continue into the exclaim. I've got my reporting clause, so I've got my speech verb, and I've got a nice bit of action, so I like a bit of action. So I like this conversation now. Have I got some rich vocabulary, some interesting verbs? Oh, I might include huddled and moaned. Could I include sword, strutted? Could I include flat? I'm alerting somebody, I'm telling somebody. I'm thinking about all those different aspects I can include there. And then I'd like to think, could I include some adverbs as well? Fearfully, the animal huddling. Give it angrily moaning. So now I've changed those verbs from above and included them and improved them with those lovely um, adverbs. As I'm looking through then, what I'd like you to do today, guys, you get your plan, your story, you use your plan to complete the show element for the elements that I said we know we need to include. And in that final row, can you think of another skill that you'd like to include? It might be that you want to use a wide variety of um, nouns. It might be that you want to try and include some semicolons. Whatever skill you think you'd like to include and then show how you can do it. So the red, all the section in the show, you need to complete today. You need to do, as I did on the page before, where I completed the show elements, you need to complete those show elements for your piece of writing. I look forward really, really lots to reading those. I can't wait. Thank you very much for listening today, Year 6.